This section is um, really just an introductory section to derivatives. And I'm going to show you where the concept of the derivative comes from. It actually comes from what's called the tangent line problem. So just want to mention here, you can kind of cheat on derivatives at this site. It's not going to help you understand derivatives, but you can check your answers. You just have to know how to put in the functions, and then you say, you know, find the first derivative of such and such, second derivative of such and such, and so forth. Um, there were four major problems that were solved that calculus grew up, grew from, and the tangent line problem is one of those and the area problem is another. There's a couple of more problems, velocity, acceleration, minimization, and maximization, that we'll actually do, get to. But Newton and, and Godfrey Leibniz were the two that were given most credit for calculus. So you can blame, uh, blame it on them if you struggle in this course. Okay, so let's take a look at the tangent line problem. Okay. So this first picture shows the graph of the parabola y equals x squared. And it's showing you the tangent line at three different values. And the tangent line, the best way I can describe it, is it's a line that just barely touches the graph at a certain point. So here, the tangent line at this point, negative 1, 1, is this dashed line that you see coming through here. It may look like it touches it at more than one place, but really it just touches it here. Now, at the point zero, zero, at the point zero, zero, the tangent line looks horizontal. And then at the point one, one, the tangent line actually looks like a, a line with a positive slope. So basically, on this side, you have a tangent line with a negative slope. Here you have a tangent line with zero slope. And here you have a tangent line with a positive slope. So you can see that the slope of the tangent line is actually changing as you move from one point to another on that graph. Okay, which is different from linear functions because the uh, rate of change, which is the tangent line, actually the slope of the tangent line will give you the rate of change at a point. And we learned that for linear functions, the rate of change was always a constant. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to talk about how to find the slope of the tangent line for a given function at a given value of x. Now, we know how to find the slope of a line if we're given two distinct points, but the tangent lines above have only one point given. So if you go back and look, all we know about this line here is that it goes through the point negative 1, 1. We know this line goes through 0, 0, and this line goes through 1, 1. So we don't know a second point. So that's what's difficult about finding the slope. Now, what we're going to do is, to, the way we're going to tackle this issue, is we're going to find a point to the right of the x value, and we'll say it's h units to the right. Now, let me say this one time, and then I can not have to say it again. Uh, other books might use delta x instead of h. So if you see delta x, that's the equivalent of h. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the slope of the line that connects those two points. Now this will not be the tangent line, but it's actually called a secant line. But we can use that secant line to get the slope of the tangent line. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Okay. This black curve here, we're going to call this black curve f of x. And we're going to look at this point right here where that red dot is. And that red dot is going to be the point x. And of course, if we know the x value, then the y value would be f of x. Okay, now we're going to travel on the x-axis. Remember, this is x. So we're going to travel h units to the right. Well, if we travel h units to the right, then that must mean we're at x plus h. So the x value here would be x plus h. So the y value on the graph at this dot here 
would be the x value would be x plus h and the y value would be f evaluated at x plus h. And so now we can find the slope of the line that connects these two points because now we have this point and this point. And you know that the slope is just the ratio of the, the difference of the y values over the difference of the x values. So let's take a look at the slope of this secant line. Well, the slope of this secant line, the difference of the y values, the second y value is f evaluated at x plus h. The first y value is f of x. And then for the x values, the second x value is x plus h. I mean, and the first value is x. But down here, if you take x plus h minus x, the x is canceled, and you just get h. And so we end up getting an expression that looks like this. Does that look familiar to you? Well, it should, because that's actually what, that's actually called the difference quotient that we worked with in a previous section. So we know the slope of that secant line over there, that red line, on the, in the other notes, it's, it's green because I actually put this red line on top of it. But what we really want to know is the slope of this blue tangent line. That's what we really want to know. Okay, well, there's kind of a way that we can sneak up on that blue tangent line. What we could do is we could pick a point closer to x. And so instead of, instead of this point being x plus h, x plus h could be here. Well, if we do that, um, then, if I can get this to spin, then our secant line would look something like that. Now, it would still have the same slope because we would just call this point x plus h and f of x plus h. Well, then what if I moved it closer? Well, if I moved it closer, what if I moved it here? Well, if I move it there, then I would be, hang on just a second here. All right. So then I would be something like that. So I'd have a secant line that looks something like that. Well, let me just drop down here to this next picture. So this was our original secant line, this green line. And now the blue line would be a second secant line. The yellow line here would be a third secant line if I got closer. Well, what you can see is as we, as we move this point x plus h closer and closer and closer to x, then the secant line is actually getting closer and closer and closer to being the tangent line. And so, in other words, as we make h smaller and smaller, this secant line actually turns into the tangent line. Now, we can't let h be 0, because if we were to let h be 0, we would actually get an indeterminate form 0 over 0. But what we can do, if you'll remember, limits, limits can actually evaluate a function as h approaches 0. So what we're going to do is, we're going to not let h equal 0, but we're going to evaluate the limit of this secant line slope as h approaches 0. Because as h approaches 0, then the secant line gets closer and closer and closer to the tangent line, and the closer h gets to 0, the closer this line becomes to the tangent line. So if this actually has a limit, if this, if this limit actually exists, then that limit will actually be the slope of our tangent line. And that's how we can get the slope of the tangent line, by taking the limit of that difference quotient as h goes to 0. I wanted to show you two formulas here, and, and really they both represent the same thing, just in a different manner. This formula actually will give you a function that represents the slope of the tangent line. So if I take the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches 0, I'll actually get another function, and that function represents the slope of the tangent line at any point of the graph. Well, if you replace x with c and write the formula the same way, 
Well, this is very limited because here C is a number. So all this will give you is the slope of the tangent line at a particular x value. So let's take, let me just show you how that works. Okay, so let's say we're given the function f of x equal x squared, and we want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2. Okay, well, since x is 2, we're going to say c is 2. And we know the function is x squared. Okay, and we also know that f of 2, if we plug 2 back into this function, we know f of 2 is 4. So, if I wanted to find the limit of this function, uh, f of c plus h minus f of c all over h, it would be f of 2, replace c with 2, f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h as h goes to 0. It would be that limit. Well, I won't waste time with the algebra here, but uh, when you replace uh, x with 2 plus h, you get 2 plus h quantity squared. And so that's f of c plus h. Now f of c from here we know is 4. And all this is over h. Now then you square that binomial, so we get 4 plus 4h plus h squared, and minus 4. Well the 4's cancel, so we get 4h plus h squared over h. Now remember, you can't plug h in here because you get 0 over 0. But what you can do is you can factor h out of the top, and you can cancel h over h, and then you're left with just 4 plus h. And you can take the limit of 4 plus h as h approaches 0, because 4 plus h, as h approaches 0, would just be 4 plus 0, which is 4. Okay? So now, but wouldn't it be better if we had a formula for finding that slope? So let's get a formula. So instead of using a particular c or a particular number, let's just calculate this difference quotient for the function. Okay, so that, for, to calculate that difference quotient, I have to plug in x plus h for x, so I get x plus h quantity squared, and then minus f of x, which is x squared. Well, if I square x plus h, I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared. Well, the x squareds are going to cancel, and so I'll be left with 2xh plus h squared over h. And again, I can't let h equal 0 because I'd get 0 over 0. But I can factor the h out of this and get h over h, which is 1, as long as h does not equal 0. And since h is only approaching 0, it won't equal 0. And then I can evaluate the limit. Because now, when the limit approaches 0, when h approaches 0, that means this becomes 0, so I get 2x plus 0, which is 2x. Well, what's great about this, as opposed to the previous example, is here, now I have a formula for the slope of the tangent line for x squared. And if I, wanna, if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2, like I did in the first example, I just plug 2 into that formula, and I get 2 times 2 is 4. If I want to find the slope, but, but I can also find other slopes. If I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equal negative 1, I plug uh, negative 1 into this, and I get negative 2. If I want to find the slope at 0, just plug 0 into this uh, function, 2x, and I get 0. And then if I want to find the slope at x equal 1, plug 1 into this function, and I get the slope of, I get that the slope of the tangent line is 2. And actually, you can plug in any x value, so you can find the slope of this function x squared now at any point on the graph using that formula 2x. And so that's what's great about um, having the using the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h rather than using uh, the formula for just a specific number. Okay, I'll continue uh, this with some examples on the next video.